Traders, I am so excited to be sharing with you today the most profitable trading strategy that I do have with 10,000 trades to prove that it actually does work that will 10x your account in one year. No Grant Cardone. Ah! What's going on? My name is Dylan Gregg and welcome back to another episode of the best trading strategy series. And today is a very, very special episode because we are actually following on from last week's video, which discussed the very popular MACD indicator. Now, usually with videos on this playlist, I would normally follow up that video with the code for that particular video. So that way you can go ahead and trade it. However, with some of the comments that I did receive last week, I think this video is going to be very, very important. And from the video last week, there is two very important comments that I want to address today. Now, the first comment that I do want to address is that for the second trading strategy, that was the trading strategy developed by Trading Rush, I did miss one important thing that I should have added in the trading strategy. And some people did get offended by this. However, I will have to say I will wear this and it was my mistake. Now, for the first part of this video, I am not only going to be making that fix for the trading strategy to see what the results are, but I'm also going to be testing this trading strategy not only on the one hour time frame, but also on the 30 minute and also on the four hour time frame as well, because Trading Rush did say that this trading strategy can work on multiple time frames. So I thought we can increase the sample size and we can see whether this trading strategy does in fact work on either a lower time frame or a higher time frame of what we tested from last week. Now, now, the second comment that I do want to address is one that I did get quite a lot as well in last week's video. And that is, well, if these training strategies did perform particularly pretty bad, what happens if we do take the opposite signals? So I have tested this out and I'm going to be sharing with you the results of that particular trading strategy with the opposite signals as well. It's going to be very, very interesting because as I mentioned, one of these trading strategies is going to perform extremely, extremely well. And I have to say, this is not a clickbait title. This is actually legitimate. I am going to be sharing with you the data with almost 10,000 trades actually traded on this trading strategy using the same methodology as we tested on last week and all the other weeks of this YouTube series. We're using TradingView, we're using PineScript, and we are coding this trading strategy. And one of these trading strategies did produce extremely good results. So, I thought this would be a little bit of fun. Let me know in the comment sections below which trading strategy are you rooting for? Are you rooting for Trading Rush's trading strategy on multiple time frames? Do you think that trading strategy is going to be the one that's going to 10x your account in just one year? Or are you betting against the trading YouTubers out there? And are you going against these popular trading strategies? And do you think actually taking opposite trading signals of the MACD indicator will give you 10x your result. Now, as I mentioned, one of these trading strategies does produce these results using this data. I'm absolutely just mind blown from it. So let me know in the comments section below which one you are rooting for. And without further ado, let's go have a look at the first part of this video and look at Trading Rush's trading strategy. Okay, traders, so this is gonna be the first part of this video, which looks at the popular MACD indicator and this MACD trading strategy, which was found on YouTube by Trading Rush. Now, as I mentioned last week, I did code this up on TradingView and these were the results. And this was the equity curve for the trading strategy. It's uh, not a pretty one, I have to admit. <laughs> However, there was one critical thing that I did miss and I want to go through that today because I'm not actually trying to hide anything. I actually want to validate whether these trading strategies work or don't work using this method. So let's have a look at what the trading strategy actually is. All right, traders. So this is the trading strategy that was done by Trading Rush, and I have coded it and I have fixed the error that I did miss on last week. So just quickly, what does this trading strategy do and what are the conditions that we need to follow? So I'm going to start off with short signals because I do have a short signal just on the screen here for short signals what we want is a bearish crossover of the macd line which we can see over here the blue line does cross below the orange line so that's a bearish crossover and just like i mentioned last week we can also see that using the histogram when the histogram goes from green to red and crosses the zero line now the second thing that we do need is that price needs to be below the 200 exponential moving average which is this white line over here now this is all i did code in last week but as i mentioned there was one element that i didn't incorporate and this is the location of the crossover 
on the MACD indicator. So for short examples, just like this one here, the crossover must happen above the zero line like it has done here. And this is the critical part that I did unfortunately miss last week and I do apologize for that. However, let's actually see if this does make a difference to our trading strategy now. The opposite, of course, is true for long signals. We want a bullish crossover of the MACD indicator. That is the first condition. The second condition is that price must be above the 200 EMA. And the third condition, of course, is that price needs to cross over on the MACD chart below the zero line of the MACD chart, which we can see as an example over here. However, there are a few things that I just wanted to point out, and this is a good example over here, and that is when do we exit the trade? Now, exiting the trade only happens when either a take profit or stop loss does get hit, or we get the complete opposite signal. So for example, we're in a short trade, we don't exit the trade until at least we get another long signal when all the conditions are met. And we can see for this example here, we still didn't exit the trade even though we got a bullish signal on the MACD because price is still below the exponential moving average. And for long trades, we want price to be above the exponential moving average. So this is not a long condition. So we didn't exit the trade. And that, as I mentioned, was something that I did pick up watching Trading Rush's video and some of the other trading YouTubers when they actually backtest these trading strategies. The second thing that I want to mention is that take profit and stop loss is based on swing highs and swing lows. And I am using the pivot high low indicator to actually find those values on a pivot period of five. The stop loss was set at the previous swing high that was confirmed. And this is this value over here. And the stop loss was taken over here. Now with the stop loss in place, we can calculate our take profit, which is at a ratio of 1.5 to one. Now, the third and final thing that I want to mention is that this trading strategy does execute when the conditions of course are all met. And that is the power of actually using automation. It's going to be 100% consistent and it removes any discretion within the trading strategy. And we can see that even in choppy scenarios just like this we are still entering trades and really if you are a disciplined trader this is exactly how you should be trading based off your trading strategy now if you're adding in an element of discretion within your trading strategy then that of course is fine as long as it's part of your trading strategy then that's the main thing however i'm back testing these trading strategies solely based on what trading rush does recommend within his videos and that is what i've coded in here and of course with the added filter of where the location of the MACD is located. So with all that being done, let's go have a look at the results. So these are the results of the added filter of the MACD crossover location. And we can see here that unfortunately with the one hour time frame, we do still have a negative result and that is minus $20,000. However, saying that this is a huge, huge improvement from the previous video where we did not incorporate this filter because previously we were at minus 200,000. We have improved this trading strategy, but unfortunately Unfortunately, it is still negative. Now, when testing this trading strategy, we still produced 5,000 trades, which is still a respectable sample size. And one thing to note is that our sample size did reduce, of course, because we have added the second filter. Now, the final thing that I want to show you is that the win loss ratio did improve. It did go up to almost 40%, 39%, which is still an, I guess, an okay win loss ratio. However, it's quite not enough to get us above break even or at least profitable with one to 1.5 risk to reward. Now I did back test this trading strategy using the same date range from our last video. So results are comparable. And that is we are back testing from the first of the first 2019 to the first of the seventh 2021 with a account size of $50,000 risking 2% risk per trade. Now let's have a look at the equity curve. I have to admit it is a much, much better equity curve. There were choppy scenarios and you might've lost your account maybe a couple of times over here but this is the scenario that actually lost us a lot of money. So even if you stuck through it and traded this trading strategy all the way through, you would have at the tail end of this trading strategy lost a lot of money and actually went negative. And even though this trading strategy did perform well in majority of the time it was tested on, it actually did not perform well at the end. And this is clear, clear red flags that 
I would probably stay away from this trading strategy or at least try to refine it a little bit more. So just so we know the numbers, there was a peak over here of around about $150,000. So if you did stick it all the way through, you would have 3X'd your account. However, this is the part where we did lose all of our money just like that. And that is what is very scary because if you recall, we started off with a $50,000 account. Although we went all the way up to $150,000, we actually lost three times of our initial balance of the account and we actually went negative $20,000. Now, one thing to remember is that this was not tested using a compounded method. So our risk was not adjusted over here based on the actual amount within the account. This is still assuming 2% risk per trade on the starting equity of the account. So all of these trades are traded based on 2% of $50,000, which is $1,000 risk per trade, even up here when we do have a $150,000 account. It's a fixed method and not a compounding method. And that's important to know. Now, this is more evident and more clearly explained if we look at the drawdown curve of this trading strategy. So this plots the drawdown of the trading strategy. And what I want to note here is that, again, we started off with a $50,000 account. So anytime this drawdown curve spikes below $50,000, that means that we have blown our accounts. So there looks like there might have been a spike here, a spike here. We got pretty close over here where even though we got close, we probably would have stopped trading even over here too. Uh, over here as well, this one looks like it did go below $50,000. And then from this point onwards, we did blow up our account. It did go below $50,000. So that means that if we did get in at any time when these drawdowns did happen, we would have blown up our account. And even if we did get close to $50,000, we would have probably called it quits before we lost everything. And even reducing your risk quite a lot may not avoid these events here and it might be likely that you can blow up your account unfortunately if these events do happen. So there was a lot of opportunities where this trading strategy just did not perform. And unfortunately for me, even though there was an improvement, I still would not look at this trading strategy. So unfortunately on the one hour time frame, it does not look good. However, as I mentioned, we can go ahead and test other time frames as well using this trading strategy, which might provide some positive results. So let's have a look at those. Maybe I spoke too soon. So this is the 30 minute time frame. This is the exact same trading strategy. And this is also using the third filter of where the location of the MACD cross has to happen. And unfortunately on the 30 minute time frame, it still did not perform. Now on the 30 minute time frame, we did get minus $184,000. So of course we did blow up our account almost four times that. And we did get 4,177 trades on the 30 minute time frame. Now a risk to reward ratio for this trading strategy was 37%. So we did get lower. And that of course is shown by the account balance at the end of the trading strategy. And now we tested this trading strategy between the 1st of the 7th, 2020 to the 1st of the 7th, 2021, because it's a lower time frame. Our date range can reduce because we still are going to get a lot of trades because of the smaller time frame. We are starting off again with a $50,000 account, risking 2% risk per trade on a fixed method, not a compounding method. The equity curve of this trading strategy looks very, very poor. Again, not the best. Well, it, it's it's not a good equity curve at all. Now, if we look at the drawdown curve of this trading strategy, we can see that there is a lot of drawdown of this trading strategy if you did decide to stick through it and did continue trading this trading strategy. So again, anything below $50,000, we would have blown up our account. And even if you got in at various other times, we still would have eventually blown up account inevitably. So on the 30 minute time frame, I don't think this trading strategy actually works. So let's have a look at our last example, which is the four hour time frame and let's hope that this trading strategy actually might work on a higher time frame instead of a lower time frame. It doesn't work. <laughs> Minus $135,000, we did have 3,000 trades. So there is a lower sample size, but again, that is because we have increased the time frame of the trading strategy to four hours. We have a win-loss ratio of, again, 37%. So pretty consistent with the previous because we are increasing the time level from a one hour or a 30 minute to a four hour. We are gonna get less candles, so we wanna increase our date range. So we did back test this trading strategy from the 1st of the 1st, 2015 to the 1st of the 7th, 2021. Again, with a starting account of $50,000, risking 2% risk per trade fixed. The equity curve is consistently bad. <laughs> 
consistently, consistently bad. And the drawdown curve of the trading strategy looks pretty much exactly the same as the equity curve. And that is because we actually weren't profitable at all in our trading strategy. It never actually made us any money and it's actually pretty much a straight line down. So unfortunately, this trading strategy does not look like it is going to 10X our account. In fact, it's going to 10X our account in the opposite direction. However, saying that we can look at the second part of this video and look to see what happens if we take opposite trading signals to these popular trading strategies that these YouTubers are providing to us. So this is the second part of this video. So let's see what happens if we take the opposite signals of what these trading strategies actually do. So what I have done here is I've taken the worst performing trading strategy from last week, which was not trading rush's trading strategy, but it was actually data traders trading strategy, which was on the 30 minute time frame, and it was a similar trading strategy. Now I'm going to go over the trading strategy with some examples and make sure you are listening carefully because of course, as I mentioned, we're taking opposite signals of what traditionally this indicator and these trading strategies would do. So it might get a little bit confusing. So for short examples, we want two conditions to be met. The first condition we want for a short trade is we want a bullish crossover of the MACD line. And we can see that over here, that price did go from red to green. So that's a bullish crossover on the histogram. All looking at the two lines, the MACD lines did cross over where the blue line crossed above the orange line. So that is a bullish crossover. So when we have a bullish crossover, we want to go short. Now, the second condition for shorts is that we want price to be above the 100 exponential moving average. So again, this is counterintuitive, but this is taking the opposite signals of what the trading strategy would do. Now that is all the conditions we're not taking into account where the location of the MACD crossover happens because that is not this trading strategy. Now the take profit and stop loss is still set at swing highs and swing lows. This does not change because if you really think about it, they can't change. Take profit always has to be below price for shorts and a stop loss above price for shorts. And of course the opposite true if we are looking at long. So we can see in this example that our stop loss is set at this previous swing high, which was this candle wick over here. And our take profit, of course, is set at 1.5 times that amount. So if I just quickly draw it up over here and then go 1.5 times that, we can see that we've got about, if I measured it correctly, 1.5 risk to reward ratio, where this trade actually ended up being a loss. Now over here, we've got a long example. So again, make sure you're listening closely because this is counterintuitive. Now for long examples, what we want is a bearish crossover of the MACD line, which we can see over here. The histogram went from green to red, so that's bearish. And for the lines for the MACD chart, the blue line crossed below the orange line, so that's a bearish crossover. So when we do have bearish crossover of the MACD, we're in fact going long. Now, the second thing we want is we want price to be below the 100 exponential moving average, which we can see in this example here. So this is a long trade over here and we did enter long. And this one, for example, did happen to be a profit. Again, our stop loss is taken from the previous swing low, which was this week over here. And of course we are going for one to 1.5 risk to reward, which if I draw it up, if I can, because I got the magnet tool on, there we go. If I draw it up over here, we got about 1.5 risk to reward ratio. And this one happened to be a profit. Now, all I did was take last week's code and change the condition. So we are taking opposite signals. It was fairly easy to do. However, again, as I mentioned last week, we do have these choppy scenarios, which we can still see over here. Again, we are executing this trade 100% automated without any discretion. And I have not taken out any of these choppy scenarios. However, saying that we did find last week that it did not perform rather well, particularly in these choppy scenarios. However, what happens if we take the opposite trades and the opposite signals, we might find that this trading strategy might actually perform quite well. So let's have a look at the results. <laughs> that's, that's right. And I, I, I couldn't believe it myself, honestly, when, when I found this. So at the end of back testing, we have found that this trading strategy did make $506,684. Again, we started off with a $50,000 account. Now, what's really good is that this trading strategy did produce 8,492 trades. So just under 10,000 trades, but still a very, very respectable sample size. Looking at the win rate, 
our win rate did actually go up over here, which we can see our win rate is 47%. So taking the opposite trading signals with a one to 1.5 risk to reward ratio, we are making 47% win loss ratio. Now I know it's not quite 50%. However, with a one to 1.5 risk to reward, it's still enough to make it profitable. And we can see from the results, extremely, extremely profitable. Now looking at the inputs, we did test the training strategy from the first of the 720 to the first of the 721 with an account size of $50,000. Again, the same account size as all the other trading strategies that we did test on, all risking 2% risk per trade. Again, what's really cool about this this is that this is a fixed method, not a compounding method. So if you are compounding your results on a very profitable trading strategy like this one, you would actually see much, much higher results and your 10X could actually be a lot more than just 10X if you are compounding your wins. So looking at the equity curve, I have to say this is probably one of the better, bet, definitely one of the better equity curves I've, I've seen. We can see that it is consistent profits over time. Again, using a fixed method. If this was a compounding method, this would be parabolic growth. Looking at the drawdown curve, and this is what is very important that I want to highlight over here. Now with the drawdown curve, there is these spikes within the curve, and that is actually really good to see, particularly in a drawdown curve. We don't want to see extended periods of drawdown. We want to see the trading strategy actually pick back up and actually produce higher highs when there is a drawdown and we're not in these drawdowns for a long period of time. Unlike the other trading strategies where the drawdown curve was actually much more prominent and there was much more extended times where the trading strategy was not producing any profit and really struggled to make higher highs in the equity curve we can see that this one is actually far from that and quite the opposite. Now, there is one thing that I wanna note here and that is if you are following along with my videos, you would know that risk management is so, so important and I would like to adjust the risk for this trading strategy. We can see here that there is a point of time where the equity curve did just go below $50,000 and we did blow our account just here. So that means we do need to adjust our risk and lower our risk from 2% risk per trade to something a bit lower that is within your risk tolerance. Now, normally I would go through that and go onto this tab right here, but I'm gonna let you do the work yourself and do the calculations yourself. And that is because with this trading strategy performing the way it is, I don't want people to actually jump the gun and go trading it straight away without actually understanding the importance behind actually testing this yourself and looking at the data and then adjusting it for your own benefit. However, I just wanna mention that even though we are reducing our risk, of course, our profit profits are gonna be reduced even more, even reducing your risk by half. So instead of trading 2% risk per trade, you're trading 1% risk per trade. You can still go away with 500% return or 5X your account, which is absolutely ridiculous. And again, that is not compounding. That is a fixed method. So if you were compounding your profits, you could probably get to that 10X mark anyway. And I think quite comfortably. So traders, do you know what that means? That means that if you voted for taking the opposite signals of what these trading strategies do recommend and what these trading YouTubers do recommend. That means you would have 10x your account in just one year. Like that's, that is ridiculous. So if I just stumbled across this video and I did see these insane results, this is what I would do and actually what I'm currently doing now. So the first thing that I would do is I would actually develop the code and develop the training strategy myself. So that way I have actual proof that everything I'm showing you is 100% correct. So that way I would know that there is nothing in this video that was fun. I would want to try to replicate and recreate these results to prove that it actually does work. Now, of course, I have already done that, but what I'm going to be doing is sharing with you the code for this trading strategy in my next video. Of course, this is the whole idea of this YouTube series because I want you to be able to develop the code yourself, but I want you to develop and test the code yourself as well so you can get similar, if not the same results as mine. Now, not only that, but I would also consider trying to adjust the training strategy or optimizing the training strategy if you you like as well, changing some of the parameters if you would like to, to see whether we can actually get a bit more alpha or a bit more profits out of the market. Now, after I have developed the code, the second thing that I would do is to actually look at how the code is performing and whether the code is performing correctly in the back test, looking at the actual chart itself. Now, a lot of people are going to be coming at this video with a bit of skepticism. And I do have to say that is actually a really good thing to do. So after the code is done, what I would do is actually look back at 
the charts to see whether the code is performing correctly so that there is no bias within the charts. Now, I have already started this process and I have to say that I cannot find anything in the charts that is leading to an upside bias in the results. The code is performing correctly. The code is putting its take profit and stop loss in the right locations and the code is position sizing according to 2% of the account. Having any errors in the code and having any upside bias or even downside bias, of course, is going to skew the results and is not going to be a representation of what really happens within the market. Now, once I've done that and I'm happy with the results, the third thing that I'm going to do is actually extend my back test, which again, I have started doing that. Now, although I'm showing you that I only back tested this trading strategy for one year, I've actually extended that back testing range. I've actually started the back test from the 1st of the 1st, 2019 to the 1st of the 7th, 2021. So I've extended my back testing date range for two and a half years, which did produce 20,000 trades, which did actually get very, very similar results, which is actually very, very scary in a good way. <laughs> So having more trades means we have a larger sample size, which means we have more confidence that our trading strategy will perform over a large period of time using this particular code. Now, once I'm happy with the sample size and looking at the charts to make sure the code is actually performing as it should, the next thing I'm actually going to be doing is actually coding this on MQL5. Now, MQL5 is something that I do code in. However, it's something that I haven't actually come and shown on this YouTube channel, not to date anyway, because I haven't actually seen an opportunity to do so. And the reason for that is most of my trading strategies are on higher time frames. So I actually don't need to automate my trading strategies. However, with this on a 30 minute time frame, this would be a prime opportunity to, if successful, automate this trading strategy and actually have an EA built around it. Now, without jumping the gun, I wouldn't put money behind this EA. I would actually backtest this once again on a MetaTrader 5 to make sure that I'm getting consistent results from TradingView to the new MetaTrader platform. If my EA is, of course, running correctly, then the next thing that I would do is of course demo trade this and then eventually live trade this with some real money. Now, the next and final thing that I wanna mention is that why does this trading strategy seem to perform well, even though it is counterintuitive? And this is something that I am going to address in a follow-up video on the trading journal series on this YouTube channel. Of course, I wouldn't be going out with this video if I wasn't confident that this trading strategy or elements of this trading strategy would be profitable. I wouldn't do this to you and I wouldn't do this to myself as well. So I have some pretty high confidence in this trading strategy, of course, further the work needs to be done to develop this trading strategy, but I want you to join me in that process. So if you did like this video and you did take something away from this video, then please give this video a thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate it a lot. Consider subscribing so that you can watch my follow-up videos of this, but also future videos, which goes through and finds out which trading strategies do work and doesn't work. But of course, everything else around that from trading to investing. With all that being said, I hope you did enjoy this video. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next one one.